Oh, hello there. Yes, well, I'm very pleased that it's Thursday. Certainly better than Wednesday, which is probably better than Tuesday, which um, I'm hoping will Thursday will be better than Friday, because I've still got Friday to go. Yes. Anyway, leaving aside my woes, just hoping for some time off work. Speaking of which, of course, um, we do have the Labour Party's latest very, 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 very watered down proposals about changing employer ease rights at work. The, uh, what was it, Employment Rights Bill, second reading, was held a couple of days ago, and um, all the usual suspects voted against it. But I was somewhat intrigued as to some of the usual suspects who voted against it, because we do have the Reform Party now with their massive number of MPs. Oh, yes. Strange that we don't hear about the other parties with the same number of MPs, like those independents, mustn't be spoken of, and the Greens. We might just mention them, but not very often. Yes, reform, 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 reform. It's always reform, isn't it? Because they have so many MPs like those other groupings, but those other groupings obviously don't represent certain business interests and therefore are not proper. Mm. Anyway, yes, so Nigel Farage and the rest of them, uh, their token working class bloke, uh, Mr Lee Anderson and the rest of them, who are basically city boys in every sense of that word, um, voted against um, the employee, in, in, uh, oh, spit it out, employment rights bill. Um, why? would be my standard sort of question to to ask at that point, because Nigel Farage and the rest will always, always, always present themselves as being on the side of the working class. And yet, given this opportunity, because after all, this is realistically the first time they've actually had MPs, given this opportunity to actually vote for things that would make lots of people's lives easier, they have declined to do so. Now, their argument will be, of course, that if you impose more costs on business, then things won't work very well. To which someone being a git like me would say, well, have they worked so well for, let's say, the last 20 years? What they really mean is we cannot accept anything that would affect profitability, even if that makes ordinary people more miserable on a rational basis or an irrational basis or any other basis. Yeah, yeah, you can't suggest ever that anything must change in terms of profitability. Otherwise, the, you have this <laughs> the sound of people slumping and feigning. Oh, my God, they're going to affect profitability, thump, as they fall to the floor. Indeed. I'm reminded um, when the national minimum wage came in, which um, basically was championed, if you recall, the last decade or so by the Conservative Party. When it was brought in, though, we were told by all of those people that knew everything about economics that it was going to make two million people unemployed. And sure enough, whoa, it didn't. And a bit like all of these new measures as well, which are about as watered down as you can possibly get in terms of what we used to have in this country, might come back to that concept. But, of course, it is still a stage too far that somebody somewhere who's rich might have to pay more, right? Yes. Imagine how dreadful that would be. Imagine if you were something like, I don't know, the Duke of Westminster, who's uh, reckoned to be worth somewhere in the region of 10 billion pounds, right? Okay, imagine if you taxed him at 1% extra. Imagine how miserable his life would be. And yet, imagine that, okay? 10 billion, don't forget, is is a thousand million. A billion is a thousand million. So 10 of those, imagine that being taxed at 1%. Huge amount of money you could do loads and loads and loads of things with. But of course, it would mean, presumably, that the Duke of Westminster suddenly would decide that it just wasn't worth his while working anymore. Whatever he does, the, it is that he does. I guess he sits in an office and signs bits of paper. Phew. It must be really hard, yes. But the latest stuff, of course, is this idea that it'll impose extra costs on businesses. And yes, to a certain extent, it will be. There's always going to be a trade-off in a capitalist system between what you give the workers and what you give the owners. Of course there is. And perhaps, in many ways, in the notion of uh, these new laws should at least 
be uh, mitigated for small scale employers, those important people that do actual stuff at the bottom of the economy. You know, those people that actually own businesses. Yes, I know there's a lot fewer of them than there used to be. Do you remember when you were growing up and there used to be loads of butchers and bakers? They weren't all just Greggs and other conglomerates. Yes, actual people that do actual work that actually employ people. Now, it is very sensible to protect those. But what people like Nigel Farage, of course, realistically represent is nothing like those people. What they represent is very, very big business interests. Like, I don't know, off the top of my head, someone like Paul Marshall that owns GB News. Ooh, yes, wouldn't it be intriguing whenever you... Well, it is intriguing occasionally when you see these people on GB News that actually mention that GB News has an owner. And suddenly, suddenly there's a terrified rabbits in headlight look amongst the presenters. Always love to see that. Doesn't happen very often because you won't get invited back because that's not the game, is it? Yes. But it does intrigue me that how it is that so many people that, broadly speaking, are right wing. OK, fine. That's if you want that to be. But we'll blindly say that that's a good thing, that we can't afford things. Well, I'm always intrigued as to who we are, because it never seems to include me this thing about not being able to afford things. I grew up in a world where there was the social contract, as it used to be known, that there was an arrangement whereby workers would get a reasonable share and employers would get a reasonable share as well. Over the years, the employers have decided that's not a game that they really want to pay. So they don't anymore. And they've just taken more and more and more and more and more. And now we're left with nothing. Okay, We're left we at the bottom are left with nothing, and they have everything, and they're still not happy about it. And you can argue that whether or not, you know, magically the powerhouse that is all these rich people is going to set us all free, but it really doesn't look like it to me. I'd like someone out there in the comments who can actually come up with a reasonably coherent economic argument rather than you're stupid, which is the standard thing I get whenever I mention Nigel Farage, of course. I'd like someone to explain to me exactly how it is we've arrived at this point. Because one of the things about things like productivity, of course, is if you run an economy that's centred on very, very cheap and easily disposable labour, you don't have to worry about productivity because you just get more cheap people. But now we're hitting the whole demographic problem of running out of cheap people. You'll notice all the arguments about no longer having migrants. Oh, what are we going to do for cheap people? We have to have cheap people because that's the economic model that we've built us out everything on for about the last 40 years. Yes, ever since Thatcher came. That's the notion of what we do in this country. It is the primary reason why productivity across the board is so low, because those people that actually own things can't be bothered to invest. Why would they? That's going to cost them money, and it might mean that they don't get a big yacht this year. Sorry to be blunt about it, but if you live in a capitalist economy, you have to accept that there are certain people at the top that earn a fortune and certain people at the bottom that don't earn anything. That isn't the politics of envy. That's the system. Now, if you want that to change, it might be an idea to actually take on board the needs of labour, as we might call it in a kind of Marxist sort of sense. And maybe, a bit like those European countries that seem to do so much better than we do, basically everywhere. I mean, you could even look at Poland now as an economic powerhouse compared to the UK. Why? Because they don't ignore the needs of people. And they don't dress it up a la reform as somehow being this sensible economic way forwards. I mean, my favourite recent meme that I've seen out there is this one. Yes, which neatly sums it up. After all, if these people are so blindingly good for us, how come things aren't good? Who's to blame? Well, it must be the Marxist teachers, mustn't it? It's all our fault. Why aren't we working harder? Hmm. Anyway, do have a lovely day. Do put some comments in. Do tell me how stupid I am without possibly explaining in any way, shape or form why I'm wrong, because I'm always impressed with that level of intellect. Mm. Won't stop them though, will it? Do have a lovely, lovely Thursday. And remember that the weekend is coming. <gasps> Enjoy. <laughs>